All righty. Are we ready? Numbers chapter 7. Just one chapter today. We'll get through this really quickly. If only it wasn't 89 verses long. <laughs> Numbers chapter 7. All 89 verses. Now, the um, good thing about Numbers chapter 7 is you only actually have to read a small part of it to get the gist. There's going to be lots of repetition. By the end of it, you're going to be very familiar with the sacrifices that the 12 tribes brought. But there's a, there's a big picture here that we need to get. So let's pray. Let's get into the text. Our Father in heaven, we pray that you would open our eyes, please, to see wonderful things in your law. Even these um, repetitious parts, uh, even, Lord, when we um, get the picture, Lord, we pray that you would, you would help us to understand why you prescribed these things and why you allowed them. And Lord, help us to see what it, what it, what it means for us today, what it implies about your character. And Lord, we praise you. We pray that you would open our, our minds to understand it, but Lord, open our hearts to accept the truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. On the day when Moses had finished setting up the tabernacle and had anointed and consecrated it with all its furnishings and had anointed and consecrated the altar with all its utensils. You remember that day? We got that at the end of Exodus, didn't we? So at the end of Exodus we had all the instructions for the setting up of the tabernacle and then we had the people making it as the Lord commanded Moses and then we had it all repeated at the end where they actually built it as the Lord commanded Moses and then Moses inspected it and you remember he inspected it and he said it's all been done exactly as the Lord commanded Moses. Wasn't that good? Well, now it's th this is talking about that day, on the day when it was set up. Verse 2, the chiefs of Israel, heads of the fathers' houses, who were the chiefs of the tribes, who were over those who were listed, approached and brought their offerings before the Lord. Now, this is going to describe the offerings that they brought. Six wagons and 12 oxen, a wagon for every two of the chiefs, and for each one an ox. So there were 12, 12 tribes, 12 chiefs, and they brought 12 offerings, each of them an ox, and they joined together to each bring a wagon. You get the picture? They brought them before the tabernacle. Verse 4, Then the Lord said to Moses, Accept these from them that they may be used in the service of the tent of meeting and give them to the Levites, to each man according to his service. So Moses took the wagons and the oxen and gave them to the Levites, two wagons and four oxen he gave to the sons of Gershon. So there's two oxen to pull each wagon. You got that? So that's why they brought six wagons and twelve oxen. And four wagons and eight oxen he gave to the sons of Merari, according to their service, under the direction of Ithamar, the son of Aaron the priest. But to the sons of Kohath he gave none. And you say, what did they do so that they didn't get a wagon and some oxen? Well, they, they had the job of carrying the equipment by hand, didn't they? So they didn't need a wagon and they didn't need oxen to pull the wagons. So to the sons of Kohath he gave none, but because they were charged with the service of the holy things that had to be carried on the shoulder. Verse 10, and the chiefs offered, uh, and the chiefs offered offerings for the dedication of the altar on the day it was anointed. And the chiefs offered their offering before the altar. And the Lord said to Moses, They shall offer their offerings, one chief each day, 
for the dedication of the altar. He who offered his offering the first day was Nashon, the son of Aminadab, of the tribe of Judah. Yes. So does it mean, um, when it says the chiefs, how does it mean that they had to um, offer their offerings one chief each day? Does that mean like for the whole year? No, just for the 12 days. A bit like the 12 days of Christmas. Nothing like the 12 days of Christmas. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, there was just a different a different tribe each day offering the offering. And there were no partridges in any pear trees. But there's an awful lot of stuff and we're going to get to hear about it now. Okay? Um, verse, where were we? 13. And his offering, you're talking about Nashon, the son of Aminadab, who's in the line of the Lord Jesus. And his offering was, here it goes. Now get used to this because you're going to hear it a lot. His offering was one silver plate whose weight was 130 shekels, one silver basin of 70 shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil for a grain offering, one golden dish of Ten shekels full of incense, one bull from the herd, one ram, one male lamb, a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old. This was the offering of Nashon, the son of Aminadab. Now, you're going to get the same thing over and over again, so I'm going to go quickly. On the second day, Nethanel, the son of Zua, the chief of Issachar, made an offering. He offered for his offering, get ready, one silver plate whose weight was 130 shekels, one silver basin of 70 shekels according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil for a grain offering, one golden dish of 10 shekels full of incense, one bull from the herd, one ram, one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old. This was the offering of Nethanel, the son of Zur. Are you ready for that again? On the third day, Eliab, the son of Helon, of the chief of the people of Zebulun, his offering was, get ready, one silver plate whose weight was 130 shekels, one silver basin of 70 shekels according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil for a grain offering, one golden dish of 10 shekels full of incense, one bull from the herd, one ram, one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and one for sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats, five male <laughs> I didn't make it a year old. <laughs> This, this was the offering of Eliab, the son of Helon. I'm going to do it in one breath. On the fourth day, Eliza, the son of Shedur, the chief of the people of Reuben, his offering was one silver plate whose weight was 130 shekels, one silver basin of 70 shekels according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil for a grain offering, one golden dish of 10 shekels full of incense, one bull from the herd, one ram, one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old. This was the offering of Eliezer, the son of Shaddai. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My apologies, but you're joining us for family Bible time. <laughs> and this is what we always used to do. So we figured you might as well join in. On the fifth day, Shalumiel, the son of Zuri, Zuri Shaddai. I wonder if that's where they got the name Zuri from. We've got a Zuri in our church. Maybe they they shortened it from Zuri Shaddai. I have to ask um, Albert and Roxy. The chief of the people of Simeon, his offering was one silver plate whose weight was 130 shekels, one silver basin of 70 shekels according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour 
mixed with oil for a grain offering, one golden dish of ten shekels, full of incense, one bull from the herd, one ram, one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats, five male lambs a year old. This was the offering of Shalumiel, the son of Zuri Shaddai. Why do you think, by the way, why do you think that the Bible lists these over and over again? There's quite a bit of that in the Bible, isn't there? Some, so, some things which seem repetitive. And it seems very strange to us because you'd think that they'd say ditto or something like that, wouldn't you? You'd think that they would just say, and he offered the same as him. Um, but they didn't. Why didn't they? I, I think there's a couple of answers to that. What, one would be to, to just say, well, obviously for these people and for those who followed, it really mattered. These were real sacrifices that they were really given. And it's like a list of recording all that they did. And it's, 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 very, and it's just a big picture observation, but it's very interesting that God takes note of everything that everyone does, even if it's just the same as so-and-so did doesn't have to be unique to be to matter to God that's quite an important thing isn't it because sometimes we can be we can think oh, I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do here I'm not doing anything special at all I'm just doing what so-and-so did it does well does it matter to God I think it does matter to God doesn't it because he's recording it all I think there's another reason as well but I'll give you that in a minute when we stop breath. On the sixth day, Eliasaph, the son of Duel, the chief of the people of Gad, his offering was one silver plate whose weight was 130 shekels, one silver basin of 70 shekels according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil for a grain offering, one golden dish of 10 shekels full of incense, one bull from the herd, one ram, one male lamb a year old, one for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and one and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old. This was the offering of Eliasaph, the son of Duel. On the seventh day, El Elishama, the son of Amihud, the chief of the people of Ephraim, his offering was one silver plate whose weight was 130 shekels, one silver basin of how many shekels? 70 shekels. Are you getting this? According to the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil for a grain offering, one golden dish of 10 shekels full of incense, one bull from the herd, one ram, one male lamb a year old, one for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old. This was the offering of Elishama, the son of Amihud. On the eighth day, Gamaliel, the son of Pedazur, the chief of the people of Manasseh, his offering was one silver plate whose weight was 130 shekels, one silver basin of 70 shekels according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil for a grain offering, one golden dish of ten shekels full of incense, one bull from the herd, one ram, one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and for the off and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five ram, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old. This was the offering of Gamaliel the son of Pedazar. Now here's a question. It all seems very repetitive to us in our day, but can you imagine if you didn't have a Bible in your hand to read and someone was reading this out to you and you were trying to memorise it, would it be helpful to have a bit of repetition? Repetition is the key to... What is it? Learning. And the key to learning is... Repetition. All right. So, 
I'm hoping that you'll have this memorized by the end. <laughs> on the ninth day of Christmas, no, uh, on the, where are we? Um, on the ninth day, Abidan, the son of Gideonai, the chief of the people of Benjamin, his offering was, do you think you can, if I leave something out, do you think you can get it? His offering was one silver plate whose weight was 130 no. shekels. Yes, it was. Uh, one silver basin of 70 shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil for a grain offering. One golden dish of 10 shekels for, full of incense. One bull from the, ha- from the herd. One male lamb, a year old. Oh, you missed it. You got it. One ram, one male lamb for a year old for a burnt offering. One male goat for a sin offering and one for a sacrifice of peace offerings. Two oxen, five rams, five male goats and five male lambs a year old. This was the offering of Abidan, the son of Gideonai. On the tenth day, Ahieza. Tenth. Verse 66. On the tenth day, the Ahieza, the son of Amishaddai, the chief of the people of Dan, his offering was... I thought we'd already had a chief of the people of Dan. No, that was Gad. Okay. I'm just looking for this. Oh, that was it was Duel and the Saf, the okay, chief of the people of Gad. All right. Um Chief of the People of Dan. Verse 67. His offering was one silver plate whose weight was 130 shekels. One silver basin of 70 shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil for a grain offering, one golden dish of 10 shekels full of incense, one bull from the herd, one ram, one male lamb, a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and one for a sacrifice, and for, for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old. This was the offering of Ahiezer, the son of Amishaddai. On the 11th day, Pagiel, the son of Ochran, the chief of the people of Asher. His offering was one silver plate whose weight was 130 shekels. Both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil. One silver basin of 130 shekels according to the shekel of the sanctuary. Well done. Both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil for the grain offering. One golden dish of 10 shekels full of incense. One bull from the herd. One ram, one male lamb, a year old, for a burnt offering. One male goat for a sin offering and for the sacrifice of peace offerings. Two oxen, five rams, five male goats and five male lambs, a year old. This was the offering of Pajil, the son of Ochran. On the twelfth day, which must be the last day because there's twelve tribes, Ahira, the son of Enan, of the, the chief of the people of Naphtali. His offering was, have you got it memorized now? One silver plate, whose weight was 130 shekels. One silver basin of 70 shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary. Both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil for a grain offering. One golden dish of 10 shekels, full of incense. One bull from the herd. One ram, one male lamb, a year old for a burnt offering. One male goat for a sin offering. And for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old. This was the offering of Ahira, the son of Enan. So think of it, every day, all of that was being offered to the Lord for 12 days. Mm -hmm. It's it's so interesting, isn't it? Because each tribe wanted to give its offering and had to give its offering. And then each tribe got their moment to kind of come and come to God and present the offering. Interesting. Everyone took turns. Verse 84. This was the dedication offering for the altar on the day when it was anointed from the chiefs of Israel. Twelve silver plates, twelve silver basins, twelve golden dishes, each silver plate weighing 130 shekels and each basin 70. All the silver of the vessels to 2,400 shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary. The 12 golden dishes, 
full of incense, weighing ten shekels apiece, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, all the gold of the dishes being 120 shekels. All the cattle for the burnt offering, 12 bulls, 12 rams, 12 male lambs a year old with their grain offering, and 12 male goats for a sin offering, and all the cattle for the sacrifice of peace offerings, 24 bulls, the rams, 60, the male goats, 60, the male lambs, a, si a year old, 60. This was the dedication offering for the altar after it was anointed. And just before we read the last bit, think of it. Every tribe brought their offering. Why? Why was it so important for every tribe to bring their offering? Because every single tribe had their sin. Every single tribe had their, their need for a guilt offering. They, they had their need for a fellowship offering with, to, to um, declare that union with God. They needed to say, they needed all of them to say, this is what, we need, didn't they? Uh, and it was really important for them all to kind of say, we have a share in this altar, mm -hmm. and we all have an equal share. We, it's not like this, this is the altar which is especially for the tribe of Judah, but not so much for the others. No, this is the, this is the way to God for everybody in every tribe kind of made that clear at this point. This is the beginning, obviously. But every single tribe is making, a, you would say, a statement. They're kind of saying, we need this. We need sacrifice. And, and that's the same for us, isn't it? Every one of us, every single, every single church, every single family, every single individual today needs forgiveness through Jesus. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so we can't just sort of say, oh, someone else is taking care of that. That's all right. We don't need to bother. Mm. No, we, need, we all need to be drawing near to the Lord ourselves. Verse 89. And when Moses went into the tent of meeting to speak with the Lord, he heard the voice speaking to him from above the mercy seat that was on the ark of the testimony, from between the two cherubim, and it spoke to him. Well, there we are. We had that at the end of Exodus, didn't we? The moment, the great moment, when the cloud of, of the glory of God filled the tabernacle. Moses couldn't even enter. But now this is, this is moving beyond that moment and to the moment when... Moses was actually able to come before the Ark of the Covenant. And there it was, the golden covered box. And inside of it, the Ten Commandments. And the blood had been put onto it. And then right there, as just as God had promised, from between the cherubim, above the ark, above the atonement cover, above the golden cover on, on the top of the box, but between the cherubim, right from there, God spoke to him. Think of it. Now, they all heard the voice of God from the mountain, didn't they? And what did they say at that time? They said, don't, don't let God speak to us lest we die. You speak to God for us. And now this is Moses going in to the presence of God in the Holy of Holies, and speaking with God, and God speaking to him. How amazing is that? That they actually had God telling them exactly what to do. And they had God giving them instructions. Now, all of those instructions become the Old Testament, and the book of Numbers and Deuteronomy, we're going to hear that. God spoke to Moses and we get the things that God said to Moses, so we get the laws. Isn't that amazing? Think of it. 
Now we have, according to the Bible, if you're saved, if your sins are forgiven, we have access into the Holy of Holies, the real Holy of Holies in heaven through the sacrifice of Jesus. And we are told, think about, think about Moses and the privilege it was for Moses to go there and speak to God and have God speak to him. That's a huge privilege, isn't it? But we are actually told as Christians to, to draw near to God through the sacrifice of Jesus. We're told that we can come to the throne of grace, that's that mercy seat between the cherubim, the real one in heaven. We can come there by prayer because of the sacrifice of Jesus. So when you realize that Jesus has actually died and his blood, his death has paid for all your sins, instead of feeling guilty and cut off from God, and like, I can't go anywhere near, don't let God, don't let God speak to me lest I die. I can't go anywhere near God because I'm so sinful. Instead of feeling like that cut off from God by our sin, we can actually go near to God and pray. And Jesus teaches us to pray our Father who is in heaven. I mean, this is, this is unbelievable. I mean, if you'd have stood, if you'd have stood there when this was being set up and when all this was happening and said to the people of Israel, do you know what, one day, Every Christian is going to have access to God just like Moses did here. They'd have all probably laughed at you. I mean, it's just to be too amazing to be, to be believable. But actually, that's exactly what's happened. Every single Christian has this privilege of drawing near to God. Now, we don't hear God's voice like Moses did, but we have God's word, which Moses didn't. We've got more information from God. Oh, yeah, that's how much Moses had. Oh, so we're, we're already past it. We're already past it. There we are. That's how much Moses had. And that's how much we've got on top of what he had. What a privilege. We also have the Holy Spirit to help us. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving us access to you through Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, we do pray that you would help us to be bold and to come to you through Jesus and actually to draw near to you. Lord, we pray that you would forgive our sins. Thank you that the sacrifice of Jesus does all this and more. That there's nothing... In, in us that cannot be put right by the sacrifice of Jesus. So we pray, Lord, that you would wash us, that you would cleanse us, that you would make us ready to draw near to you. And that as we read your word day by day, we would tremble and rejoice at the great privilege of hearing your voice. Teach us, please, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, who knew Numbers chapter 7 could have so much in it? God bless you. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow.